Speaking of something, and speaking of wide receivers, let's talk about the depth chart. The depth chart is officially released. The first depth chart of the offseason has been officially released. Now, of course, you take this with a grain of salt. We do not necessarily look at this depth chart and take it as it is, right? Face value. There's a lot that could change. There's a lot that probably will change. But it's interesting because this is our first look as to not only the roster in totality, of course, but the starting lineups. So I think the first thing that would probably jump off the page, well, there's a few things, right? To me, the first, <laughs> you want to know, you want to, you want to know what really jumped off the page for me first. And it's like the most random thing, but I, I, I'm not quite sure if you can actually, hold on, I got to take away this little banner here so you can see it. So the first thing I noticed is if you look, if you look right here, the first thing that popped out under the pronunciation guide, which I love this because this like this just shows me how wrong I am on some of these names. Like I've been saying Teron Johnson forever, especially since the pick six against the, the Ravens. It's Taron Johnson. And of course, most people say Taron Johnson. I got so wired into saying Teron. It was kind of like when we all call, called Tyrod Taylor, Tyrod Taylor. And then he came out and was like, no, it's Teron. And we were like, what? What? Dude, no way. How did you never say anything ever? And now it's like my brain is so wired and I will never be able to call Tyrod Durad, right? But we all know Tyler Bass is Tyler Bass, but you got to think that the Bills PR team had a little bit of fun with this one. Under the pronunciation guide, Tyler Bass, next to Bass, they write in parentheses, like the fish. That was the first thing that stood out to me. I thought that was hilarious. So we look up here on the offense. I think probably the first thing that will stick out is the um, – the reassurance, I guess you could say, that wide receiver Isaiah McKenzie has indeed, up until this moment, solidified himself into the starting slot wide receiver position. We see Jamison Crowder will be backing him up. Now, obviously, things can change, but we have heard time and time again over the last month how well Isaiah McKenzie has been performing and how he has been taking the majority of the first-team reps at the slot position and here you go. First step chart of the year proves that that's exactly what is, uh, you know, to be the case. You look through here as far as the entire offensive depth chart is concerned. The other thing that might that might stick out, of course, is, well, why is uh, David Questenberry starting over Spencer Brown? Well, Spencer Brown really hasn't been able to practice at all this offseason due to injury. That's one of those situations right there you look at and wonder or not wonder, really, you, you look at and pretty much tell yourself that that will be different as soon as it can be different. Spencer Brown will definitely be starting at that right tackle position when he is able. And then you got Ryan Bates here over Cody, Ford, over Cody Ford, which you know me, huge, huge Ryan Bates fan. And from what I have heard uh, out of the scrimmage Friday night, Ryan Bates had himself a hell of a night on the offensive line. So I am one of Ryan Bates' biggest fans. If you paid attention last year to the run game at all, Devin Singletary really started to hit stride when Ryan Bates took the lineup on the offensive line. And I don't think that was any coincidence. I really think Ryan Bates brought a different element to the offensive line that allowed the run game to open up more than it had been earlier on in the season. So love to see that. And then Roger Saffold back in the mix. Roger Saffold officially activated off of the non-football related injury list. He is finally back to practice. Of course, he had suffered that injury in a car accident. The Bills take in Roger Saffold this offseason. Haven't really been able to see what he's got yet, of course, due to that. But he is now finally activated. So it'll be good to see him get some reps in, perhaps in these preseason games coming up before the regular season hits. Uh, and then you continue to look through here. Another guy that I heard the, his name come out of the scrimmage on Friday night was Tommy Doyle. Now, you know, Deion Dawkins had missed some practice time over the last couple of weeks due to personal reasons. We all know Deion Dawkins' spot is not in jeopardy at all. But Tommy Doyle in a rotation. When I was at practice last week, and I know that size and strength and all that does not necessarily translate into success on the field or skill, but you'd be hard pressed to find a bigger human than Tommy Doyle. I mean, that dude is a freak. I think he's six, eight, three twenty, something like that. And I heard he had himself a pretty decent day out on the line when he did have reps on Friday night. Now moving down into the defense, you know, with the injuries going on right now, 
it does make you wonder, especially at the cornerback position, what is going to wind up happening. From what I've been told, you know, Kyer Elam, he's still going through some growing pains, and that's that's obviously expected. The first-round draft pick for the Bills, still trying to get his feet wet in the NFL. He has been struggling a bit in simulation-style uh, practice, in particular on Friday night. You have to wonder, is it is it the fact that he's struggling, or is the Bills' wide receiver core really just that great? I mean, if you're going up against, what, Gabe Davis – who just in this offseason put on 17 pounds. And like I told you last week, my observations from camp, I mean, it it looks like that. It actually looks more than 17 pounds. You know, last year when Devin Singletary really hit the gym and he posted that picture online of him with his shirt off and he just looked absolutely shredded. That was the first, like, thought that came to my mind when I saw Gabe Davis out on the field. It was like when you saw that picture of Devin Singletary, you were like, geez, an utter transformation, right? Like you can tell not only is the, the rumors or not rumors, but the, you know, the, the written statements you see like, Oh, so-and-so has put on muscle or weight. You read that. And it's not until you see it that you truly are like, Whoa, right. That Devin Singletary picture was whoa to me. When I was about 50 yards away from Gabe Davis, it was a legitimate. Whoa. Like my God, this dude, he looks huge. He looks like an absolute freak athlete. As far as size and height is concerned, so you have to wonder, for a guy like Kyir Elam, a rookie, of course, is it that he's struggling? Which, of course, there's got to be elements of that. Every rookie's going to struggle. But is that being compounded by the fact that he is squaring off against one of the best wide receiver cores in the league? So based on this depth chart right now, you got Dane Jackson in that spot. Now, Tredavious White right here um, at the cornerback one position, that, of course, will not be the way it will be. A lot of bees there. That, of course, will not be the status quo week one. We're still waiting for Tredavious White to hit the lineup. Although what we are hearing is his progression is going tremendously well. I mean, they seem to be they seem to have the utmost confidence over at One Bills Drive in regard to Tredavious White's rehab this offseason. I mean, he seems to be really grinding his ass off. I can't tell you how many videos and pictures I've seen of him staying late after training camp, really putting the rehab in, really working out on that injury. So it could be sooner than later, but I would not anticipate Tredavious White being ready for week one. The cornerback position will be interesting as things kick off for the season, as well as the safety position. Jordan Poyer, of course, suffering his, suffering his injury in camp, as well as Micah Hyde. So there is a lot going on in the backfield right now. And that might be why it looks I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I want to say weak. I guess maybe that that's why it's showing its its fold, so to speak, in these scrimmages and practices. Not only are you facing off against an elite wide receiver core, but you do have a lot of banged up guys on that defense. Um, you do look at this depth chart, though, and man, all the way down. You start at offense, you go all the way down to here. I mean, that is just one hell of a squad on paper, is it not? I mean, is it not? Just take a look at, you know, you go up and down here. Truly incredible. And then you come down here to the special teams. Interesting. You got Matt. You got Matt Hawk penciled in at that starting spot right now. I would like to believe, and based on what you're hearing, Matt uh, Matt Areza will definitely be in contention for the starting job. Can't imagine it takes long for him to wind up winning it. I saw Sal Capaccio tweet out today that he saw he saw uh, Matt Areza kick a a punt today that that hit a 70 to 75 yard air uh, air height or whatever. I mean, are you kidding me? 